what is up guys welcome back to another video and today we're gonna be talking about carbon plate shoes or running shoes with a carbon plate in them. These are relatively new to the running scene. And today I'm gonna give you my thoughts on these shoes, whether I think they help, whether I think they're bad, basically a little bit about them, and whether or not you should get them yourself. Let's get into it. A little bit of background on me and these type of shoes. I've ran for almost 10 years now, and I've only been using carbon plate shoes for around four of those years which is pretty much when they came out and pretty much when anyone could buy them. I ran in high school and now I also run in college for Emporia State, as you can see. That's a D2 college located in Kansas. I used to run in mostly Saucony and Hoka. However, when Nike came out with their carbon plate shoes, I gave them a try and I've been using them pretty much ever since. I actually began using carbon plate shoes with this model which this is the Nike Zoom Fly SP. It has three fourths of a carbon plate in them. Basically that goes from around here to the tip of the shoe. I actually have two pairs of these with me. This one uh, I kind of stopped using because I found out that they're an extremely rare pair, the New York City version. If you have a new pair of these, they're going for around $400 depending on the size you wear. More recently, actually about two months ago, I bought a pair of these ones. I believe these are called something like the Nike Air Zoom Fly or something of that nature. They have a full carbon plate and then this is a bubble in the front. Final carbon plate shoe that I have right now is actually probably one of the most hyped track spikes of all time. I bought them off a friend very recently and that is the Nike Alpha Zoom Fly which I think that's what they're called. The other spike similar to this is called the Dragonfly which that's mainly for long distance running. This is the kind of the 800, 1500 version. Now that we've covered my background with the carbon plate shoes and some of the models that I use, let's get into more of the review part of this video. And that's gonna begin with, do they make you faster? Answer that question, at least from my experience, is yes. In each model of these shoes, you'll find that uh, the more carbon plate, the more bubbles in them, the faster they make you feel. That's up to a point because in these shoes, they're actually so big that if you're trying to sprint with these on, you're not actually gonna be able to get up to top speed just because of how big the heel to toe drop is. They aren't great for sprinting, but if you're doing like say a tempo or a longer race, um, these would definitely help. I actually noticed when I first started using these, my easy runs were about 15 seconds faster per mile. That doesn't mean I'm gonna race that much faster per mile in an actual race. When you put them on, it gives you this sense of being on a trampoline almost. You're actually kind of unstable when you first put them on because of the bounce and the return it gives you. I don't know if it's more of a psychological thing necessarily in your head that you think you're going faster, but comfort and the return on these carbon plate shoes has definitely seem to make me think that they help a lot. Now let's get into some of the negatives of these shoes and why I think you might not want to use them or why you may not want to become reliant on them. That kind of leads us into my first point, which is they might make you reliant on that type of shoe. If you're running on these shoes every single time with these bubbles in them and the carbon plates, you're gonna put a regular shoe on and you're probably gonna feel a lot slower or a lot less comfortable. And I don't know if that's really a bad thing, but say you were to have to move to old shoes or say you forgot these shoes to go on a run, it may kind of suck because you're so used to a crazy amount of comfort and a crazy amount of energy return that it could affect your performance if you were to miss out on bringing these shoes. Another thing that I noticed on at least the original version is that they tend to wear out pretty fast. As you can see on this first version, they tend to get similar to this within about two months of running in them. However, what I've noticed running in these ones is that they tend to wear way less slowly, hence the new rubber they have on the bottom. This rubber was just spotty and pretty thin, as you can see. And the next thing you may be wondering about is price. We're looking at these three shoes again. This middle version, you can get these for around $100. They're actually an older style shoe, so it's kind of hard to find them, but if you do find them, they aren't terrible in price. This version goes for about $150. Find them pretty much anywhere right now just because they're so popular and they just came out. The most expensive version, of course, and the version you can't find anywhere right now is the Spike. It retails for $180, which means you're probably gonna get it for around $200 with tax and shipping. However, you aren't gonna be able to find it anywhere right now, and I've seen them going for around $400 to $700 on resale websites such as StockX. The final negative to the shoe, other than than being slightly expensive and the wear and tear on them is the bubbles. You won't have to worry about that on older versions or versions without this bubble. I found within the first week that this bubble popped. I actually took some glue and was able to glue it shut. Yeah, that did happen and it may have just been the pair I got. It may happen for other people, so I thought I'd mention it. Now that we've covered some of the negatives, let's get into some of the positives of these shoes. It starts with the comfort and the speed they give you. It's pretty exceptional if you've never gotten a chance to try any of these shoes on, especially the carbon plate and the bubble. 
It's pretty impressive and I definitely recommend you try it. Again, you can't really tell how much faster they make you. It does feel a lot faster and it does feel like it makes you faster and gives you a better shot of getting those PRs. Some people hate the shoe because of that. I don't know if there's much more to say on the positive shoe. Like, it makes you faster. We've now covered basically a little bit of my background with these shoes, running in college, running in high school over the last six to eight years, wearing these shoes for around four of those six to eight years, whether they make you faster, which in my opinion, I think they do. We've covered some of the negatives which have been making you more reliant on the shoes, the prices of the shoes, which can get very expensive depending on the model you get, the wear and tear on the shoes, which tends to get better over time as each new model comes out. We also covered uh, the major positive of the shoe, which the comfort and the speed it gives you, which are both massive and definitely outweigh the negatives of the shoe, at least in my opinion. It's up to you to decide on whether that's for you. Just try a version of the shoe, see how it feels for you. If I was gonna give you a recommendation, I definitely recommend going and trying the Nike Zoom Fly SP or some of the newer versions of it. This is gonna be the least expensive one and it's probably the best one to try on because it starts with like three-fourths of a carbon plate and doesn't go all the way to this craziness where it's a full carbon plate and basically bubbles all over the bottom of it. See if you like it, see if you hate it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some perspective into carbon plate shoes. With that being said, don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you enjoy these videos. I hope to see you in the next one. <music>